Question number one. Write 0 0.75 as a fraction. So to change to a fraction, you divide by 100. 75 divided by 100 is 0 0.75. And or to, to change to, to simplify it, 75 divided by 25 is 3, and 100 divided by 25 is 4. So fraction is part over whole. So 0.75, because it's two decimal places, 1, 2, you divide by 100. So the fraction is 3 over 4. Question number 2. Write the following numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest number. The smallest numbers are... The smallest number here would be minus 3, followed by minus 1, 0, 2, and 4. Minus 3, minus 1, 0, 2, and 4. Question number 3. Write down two factors of 15. So the factors of 15 are 1 times 15 is 15. 3 times 5 is 15. You can choose two of them. You can choose one and three or three and five. I've just listed all the factors and it says write down two factors. So choose two of them and then that's fine. Question number four. Change 1756, 1756 grams to kilograms. Now to change from grams To kilograms from grams to kilograms if you look at the diagram below you divide by 1000 so that means 1000 grams is one kilograms to change from grams to kilograms you divide by 1000 so 1756 divided by a thousand you count three decimal places behind one two three that gives you 1.756 kilograms. So you can use this at the bottom to help you remember how to change from grams to kilograms. Question number five. Write the number two million in figures. Million has got six zeros. So you write two and write down six zeros in front of it. That's 2 million. Or to write it in standard form is 2 times 10 to the power of 6. That is still correct. Question number 6. Dave goes into a cafe and buys 2 cups of coffee and a piece of cake. Each cup of coffee costs £2.75. The cake costs £2.90. Dave pays with a £10 note. He thinks he will get more than £1.50 in change. Is Dave correct? You must show how you get your answer. So you start by working out the total for the two cups of coffee. The two cups of coffee, each one is £2.75. So you multiply by two. It gives you £5.50 for the two cups of coffee. And then you want to add the cost of the cake. The cake is £2.90. So you can add the two cups of coffee, £2.75 plus £2.75, plus the cake, £2.90. That gives you £8.40 altogether. Now, you want to remove that from the £10 note because Dave pays with a £10 note. So £10 minus £8.40, it gives you £1.60 change. Is Dave correct? Because Dave says he thinks he'll get more than £1.50. The answer is yes, because the change is £1.60, and £1.60 is bigger than or greater than £1.50. Question number seven.
there are white boats on a lake. There are seven people in each boat. Write an expression in terms of why for the total number of people in the boats. An expression hasn't got an equal to sign. So there are seven people and there are Y boats. So it's seven times Y. You write it as seven Y. Question number eight. Simplify. A times B times seven. All we want to do is to remove the multiplication sign and write it as seven AB. So mathematicians don't like to write that multiplication sign. 7ab means a times b times 7 and we always put the number in front and then put the letters in alphabetical order that is why we have 7 and then a comes first b comes next part 8b simplify y times y times y is the same as y to the power 1 times y to the power one times y to the power one. And you add the powers together because the base are all the same, y, y, y. One plus one plus one, it gives you three. So it's y cube. Eight C, simplify fully. The top, e times e times e times f, e times e times f times f you can cancel one two e at the top and cancel two e at the bottom and you can cancel one f at the top and cancel one f at the bottom and that gives you e over f so the answer is e over f when you simplify it question number nine the pictogram shows information about the number of vinyl records sold in a shop on Monday and on Tuesday. On Monday and on Tuesday. Part A, write down the number of vinyl records sold on Monday. If we look at the key, the key is at the top right hand side. The key tells us how many vinyl records is represented by the circle. Eight vinyl records. So there's eight for Monday. There's three of those circles. Eight, eight, eight. Eight times three, it gives you 24. So on Monday, there are 24 vinyl records sold. On Tuesday, there's eight, eight, and there's one quarter of a circle. One quarter of eight is eight divided by four, which is two. So eight plus eight plus two, it gives you 18. So on Tuesday, 18 vinyl records are sold. The next part, on Wednesday and Thursday, a total of 36 vinyl records were sold. The number of records sold on Thursday was eight times the number of records sold on Wednesday. Use this information to complete the pictogram. So we have Wednesday and we have Thursday. It means if we sell one on Wednesday, we sell eight on Thursday. Very important. If you sell one on Wednesday, you sell eight on Thursday. So we add the total. One plus eight, it gives you nine. We want to find how many parts 36 is the total vinyl records that were sold so 36 divided by 9 it gives you 4 so we want to work, multiply 4 times 1 it gives you 4 for wednesday and 4 times 8 it gives you 32 for thursday so for wednesday is 4 which we can draw as half of a circle. Call one full circle is eight. So half of it is four. And for Thursday, 32. 32 divided by eight is four. So we draw four circles. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
Question number 10. Here are three symbols. Less than, greater than, and equals to. Write one of these symbols in each box to make four true statements. So if you look at what I've put at the top right there, equality and inequality, the first sign, that's the equal sign. This sign is not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equals to. You need to try and learn what these signs mean and know their names. Now we look at 14 and 21. 14 is less than 21, so we use the less than sign. 4 plus 7 is 11. 103, take away 92, is 11. So 11 is equal to 11. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 times 2 is 4 on the other side. So 4 is equal to 4. Because the left is 4 and the right is 4. Minus 3 and minus 5. Minus 3 is bigger than or greater than minus 5. Question number 11. P is equal to 7 times R plus 3 times Q. Work out the value of P when R is 5 and Q is minus 4. This is substitution. We replace the value of R with 5 and replace the value of Q with minus 4. So P becomes equals to 7 times 5 plus 3 times minus 4. Put that in the bracket. So 3 times minus 4, it gives you minus 12. 7 times 5, it gives you 35. And when you subtract 35 minus 12, you would get 23. So 23 is your answer. Question number 12. Here is part of a train timetable. It's going from Brighton to London. The 0722 in the morning gets from Brighton gets to London at 9 o'clock. The 0729 gets to London at 0832. Graham gets to, to the train station in Brighton at 0715 in the morning. As using the 24-hour clock. Work out how many minutes he has to wait until 0722. The difference, 0722 minus 0715, it gives you seven minutes. That means Graham has to wait for seven minutes at the train station. Part B, work out how long it would take the 0722 train to get to London. So from 0722 to London, which is 0900, we want to work out the total time. So from 0722, if you look at the yellow line there, to 8 o'clock, it's at another 38 minutes. Because 38 plus 22 gives you 60. So adding another 38 minutes, it gets to 8 o'clock. And then from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, another 60 minutes. So you want to add the total 38 minutes plus 60 minutes. And that gives you 98 minutes, which you can still write as one hour, 38 minutes. So 38 minutes gets from 7.22 to 8 o'clock and 60 minutes from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And you add the total and that gives you how long it would take the train to get from Brighton to London. Question number 14, write the ratio 4.5 is to 2.25 in the form n is to 1. Because you want to get one of them to be 1, you want to divide by the smaller number. And the smaller number is 2.25. So 2.25 divided by 2.25 gives you 1. And 4.5 divided by 2.25 gives you 2. So that ratio is 2 is to 1. The 2 represents the n and the one 
just represents the one in this situation. Two is two, one. That's how you do that one. Question number 15. A garden is in the shape of a rectangle, 90 meters by 60 meters. Flowers are grown in 40% of the garden and the rest of the garden is grass. Work out the area of the garden that is grass. So you want to work out the total area of the rectangle. 90 times 60, length times width, 5,400 meters squared. Now, since flowers are grown in 40% of the garden, we want to find 40% of that 5,400. And that will give you 2,160. And you can use your calculator to get the 40% of 5,400. Now, what is left, you subtract from 5,400. 5,400 minus 2,160, because that's the area which is grass, which is not flowers. And that would give you 3,240 meters squared. So the area of the garden that is grass is 3,240 meters squared. Question number 16. Four bias coins, A, B, C, and D, are shown, are thrown. Probability that each coin will land on head is shown in the table. For coin A, the probability is 0 0.33. For coin B, 0 0.033. Coin C, one third. Coin D, 30%. Which coin is least likely to land on heads? The one which least likely is B because B is 3.3%. If you change all of them to 100% by multiplying by 100, 3.3 is the smallest. A part two, which coin is most likely to land on heads? Which coin is most likely to land on heads? The coin is C because C is 33.3 recurring, that dot there recurring, 33.3. .3. So C is the answer. Julie says, the probability that the coin C will land on heads is the same as the probability that the coin C will land on tails. Is she correct? Give a reason for your answer. No, she is not correct. Probability of head is one over three and probability of tail is two over three. And these are not the same. Coin B is going to be thrown 4,000 times. Work out an estimate for the number of times coin B will land on heads. So the formula for that you use expectation is the probability times the number. You expect to get, when you multiply, what you expect to get, you multiply the number times the probability. And they're going to throw it 4,000 times. And the probability for B is 0 0.033. So 4,000 times 0 0.033. So you go to B, or you want it for B. And that gives you 132 as the answer. So the number of times point B will land on heads is 132. Question number 17. There are 84 calories in 100 grams of banana. There are 87 calories in 100 grams of yogurt. Pretty has 60 grams of banana and 150 grams of yogurt for breakfast. Work out the total number of calories in this breakfast. So let's start with the banana. 100 grams, you get 84 calories. 60 grams will give you how many calories? We can use cross multiply. 100 times X is equals to 84 times 60. 
So 84 times 60 divided by 100 would give you 50.4 calories for the banana. So if you have 60 grams of banana, you will get 50.4 calories for 60 grams of banana. Let's look at yogurt. 100 grams of yogurt, it gives you 87 calories. 150 grams of yogurt, it gives you an unknown. We call that X. So we can cross multiply as well. 150 grams times 87 calories divided by 100 grams, it gives you 130.5. So for your yogurt, 150 grams will give you 130.5 calories. So you want to find the total number of calories in that breakfast. So you add them up. 50.4 calories from eating the banana, 130.5 calories from eating the yogurt. And you add those two together, you get 180.9 calories in total. Question number 18. Machine, machine A and machine B both make car parts. Machine A makes six parts every 10 minutes. Machine B makes 13 parts every 15 minutes. On Monday, machine A makes parts for 12 hours. And machine B makes parts for 10 hours. Work out the total number of parts made by the two machines on Monday. So let's look at machine A. Let's start with A first. Six parts every 10 minutes. So let's see for every hour. 10 minutes. If you multiply by six, that means 36 parts for every hour. Because if you multiply 10 times six, it gives you 60. So 36 parts for 60 minutes or every hour. Now, machine A makes parts for 12 hours. If you multiply by 12, hour, one hour times 12, it gives you 12 hours. And then 36 times 12 will give you 432. Let's go to machine B. Machine B is 13 parts for every 15 minutes. So for one hour, you times 15 by 4. 15 times 4 gives you 60 minutes, which is one hour. And then you times 13 by 4. It gives you 52. So for one hour, there will be 52 for machine. 52 parts for machine B. Now, we times by 10 because it's going to do it for 10 hours. So 52 times 10 hours it gives you 520. So 52 times 10 will give you 520. So you want to find the total number of parts. So the total, you add them. For machine A, is 432. For machine B, is 520. When you add them, it gives you a total of 952. So to quickly summarize, you want to work out how many parts are made every hour for machine A and then times it by 12 for 12 hours. For machine B, you want to find how many parts are made every hour, and then you times it by 10 to get it for 10 hours. And then you add them together, it gives you the total. Question number 19. Here is a plan of a kitchen drawn to a scale of one is to 30. One centimeter on paper, 30 centimeter in real life. So that's the scale. Sam is going to put a small table in the kitchen. The table has to be more than a 180 centimeters from A and more than 150 centimeters from BC. Show by shading the diagram, the region where Sam can put the table. 
is going to be 180 centimeters from A. So if you divide, because the scale is one is to 30, 180 divided by 30, it gives you six. So you're going to draw six centimeters. So you would use a compass and draw an arc six centimeters with A being the center. So you draw an arc six centimeters with A being the center. So it cannot be, it has to be outside that six centimeters. It cannot be inside this part of six centimeters. But it has to be more than 150 centimeters from B. So 150 divided by 30, because you're using the scale, that gives you five. So you go to B, C, and you measure five centimeters from it, and you draw the line. It cannot be inside that five centimeters from B, C, 100 from B, C. So it can only be in the shaded part. So you can only put the table in the shaded part, anywhere in the shaded part. Question number 20, part A. Solve 14N greater than 11N at six. The solve means to find the value of N. So we want to put N on the left-hand side and solve it. So 14N minus 11N, you subtract 11N from both sides is greater than six. 14n minus 11n is 3n. 3n is greater than 6. What do you multiply by 3 to get 6? Or you divide 6 divided by 3. So n is greater than 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that's the solution. n is greater than 2. On the number line below, show the set of values of x for which Minus two is less than X plus three, less than or equals to four. Now we want to have X to be on its own. So we want to remove the three, the plus three. So whatever you do to the left, you do the same to the middle and you do the same to the end. So you minus three to the left, from the left, minus two minus three, it gives you minus five. X plus three minus three, it gives you X. Four minus three, it gives you one. So you minus three from the three parts of it. So you go for minus five less than X, less than or equals to one. So you start at minus five, you put a little circle. You end at one, you put a little circle. But the one with one, you shade the circle. Why do you shade the circle? because the less than or equals to means it includes one. The one at five, you do not shade the circle. The less than means it does not include five. So you can go for minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, and one. It does not include five, so you do not shade the circle. Less than or equals to one means you include one and you shade the circle. On the grid below, draw the graph of y equals to 2x minus 3 for values of x from minus 2 to 4. So you need to work out the values for y, given values of x from minus 2 where you start up to 4. So if you start with minus 2, you substitute minus two in place of X, minus two times two minus three gives you minus seven. Two times minus one minus three gives you minus five. Two times zero is zero minus three it gives you minus three. Two times one is two minus three, it gives you minus one. You substitute in two. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3, it gives you 1. 2 times 3 is minus 3. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3, it gives you 3. Once you've collected all the points, you work out all the points, you can do this with the calculator. 
sub in the in the table function of the calculator, the Casio class width calculator. Put in the values for x, and then you get the values for y in the table. You just copy it down. So you plot the first point minus two, minus seven, minus two. You come down minus seven. You mark the point. The next one minus one, minus five, minus one. Minus five. The next point zero minus three. Zero minus three. You mark the point. One minus one. One minus one. You mark the point. Two one. Two one. After you mark all the points, you join it with a straight line. And that gives you the graph for y equals to two x minus three. Question number 22. Hannah is planning a day trip for 195 students. She asked a sample of 30 students where they want to go. Each student chooses one place. The table shows information about her results. Place, theme park, number of students, 10. Theater, number of students five sports center number of students eight seaside number of students seven work out how many of the 195 students you think will want to go to the theme park so because they've used a sample of 30 students so 10 of them wants to go to the theme park so it's 10 over 30 is one third so for every 10 students, every 30 students, 10 wants to go to the theme park. So one third wants to go to the theme park. So we can find one third of one, nine, five. One over three times one, nine, five. That gives us 65. Part two, state any assumption you made and it's highlighted, explain how this can affect your answer because your answer can be more or less, depending on the assumptions you're making. One of the assumptions is sample represents all 195 students. So this sample of 30, it is representing all the 195 students. The sample is a random sample. That's another assumption. You choose them randomly. There is no bias. There's no bias. The 30 students are from the 195, not from somewhere else. The 30 students are from that 195. And make sure that 10 out of every 30 wants to go to the theme park. So those are the assumptions that you make so that you can carry out that calculation to work out how many of the 195 students you think who want to go to the theme park. Question number 23. A container is in the shape of a cuboid. The container is two thirds full of water. A cup holds 275 milliliters of water. What is the greatest number of cups that can be completely filled with water from the container? So the greatest number of cups that can be completely filled with water from the container. So we work out the volume of the container. The volume is length times width times height. 30 times 19 times 6 gives us 3,420 cubic centimeters. And that's the volume of the cuboid but it says it's two thirds full of water. So we want to find two thirds of that volume. So two over three times 3,420, put that in your calculator, you get 2,280. That is two thirds of it. Now it is this two thirds that we are going to pour into those cups to see how many of those cups it can fill. That two thirds is 2,280. Pouring it 275 milliliters a time, it would fill into 
8.29. But we cannot use 0.29 of cup because one of the greatest number of cups that can be completely filled. It must be completely filled, not half filled or 0.29 filled. So we can fill only eight cups completely. Number 24, ABC is a right angle triangle. Calculate the length of AB. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So we can use trigonometry. Sine of 38 is equal to X over 16 and we can rearrange it to get the value for x. That would be you multiply by 16. 16 times sine 38. It gives you 9.85058306. But to two decimal places, you put a line after the second decimal place and the number after it is 0, which is smaller than 5. So it's just 9.85. So we are using trigonometry here. Soka Tua is the way to remember the formula and we are using the saw. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 38 is opposite. You look in that way, that's the opposite. And divided by the hypotenuse, which is H. So X over 16. Mm -hmm. And you rearrange it to find the value for X. Question number 25. Sally used her calculator to work out the value of a number. Why? The answer on her calculator display began 8.3. Complete the error interval for Y. So 8.3. If you have 8.25, you can round it to 8.3. If you have, it has to be less than or equals to Y because you can round it to 8.3. And if you have 8.35, which has to be less than, so it's 8.34999 or 44, you can round it to 8.3. So the answer on her calculator display began, so it's 8.3 less than equals to Y less than 8.4. Question number 26. 360 pounds is shared between Abby, Ben, Chloe, and Dinesh. The ratio of the amount Abby gets to the amount Ben gets is 2 is to 7. Chloe and Dinesh each get 1.5 times the amount Abby gets. Work out the amount of money that Ben gets. So you write it in the form A is to B is to C, is to D. Ratio of amount Abby gets to the amount Ben gets, 2 is to 7. Abby and Ben, 2 is to 7. For Chloe and Dinesh, we have to multiply by 1.5, the amount of Abby. So 1.5 times 2, it gives you 3. So Chloe gets 1.5 times 2, it gives you 3. And Dinesh also get 1.5 times Abby's amount. 1.5 times 2 gives you 3. Now we add the total. 2 plus 7 plus 3 plus 3 gives you 15 parts. Now, 360 divided by 15 is 24. So Ben... What Ben gets, you multiply 24 times 7, it gives you 168. Another way you can do it is if you put Abby to be X, Ben to be 3.5X, which is 7 over 2, Chloe to be 1.5X, Dinesh to 1.5X, when you add it, you get 7.5X. And from there now, you can solve it using those methods but this one where you got 15 parts and then you get 360 divided by 15 you get 24 
and for Ben, 24 times seven is 168. That one is straightforward. Question number 27, write 0 0.00562 in standard form. The decimal point goes after the first number, one, two, three, so 5.62 times 10 to the minus three. So the decimal point is after the first number. Write 1.452 times 10 to the three as an ordinary number. So you start from the decimal point, you move it three places to the right. One, two, three. So you get 1452. So you start from the decimal point, you move it three places to the right. One, two, three. You get 1452. Question number 28. Here are the first five terms of a Fibonacci sequence. 336915. Write down the next two terms of the sequence. So you add 3 plus 3, it gives 6. 3 plus 6, you get 9. 6 plus 9, you get 15 and 9 plus 15 you get 24 and then you add the next one 9 plus 15 you get 24 and when you add the next one you get 29 so the numbers go the next two numbers are 24 and 39 next part the first three terms of a Different Fibonacci sequence are A, A, 2A. Find the C term of this sequence. So A, A, the first two, you add them. You take the next two, A and 2A, you add it, it gives you 3A. You take the next two, 3A and 2A and 3A, it gives 5A. And the next two, you add them, 3a and 5a you get 8a so find the seed term of the sequence the sixth term of the sequence is 8a question number 29 a is 4 5 as a column vector b 3 2 work out a minus 2b as a column vector so a is 4 5 minus 2 times b is 3 2 2 times 3 is 6 2 times 2 is 4 so you have 4 5 minus 6 4 so you subtract the top 4 take away 6 is minus 2 and 5 take away 4 is 1 so as a column vector is minus 2 1 so we had to multiply first 2 times b, 2 times 3, 6, 2 times 2 is minus 4. Had to multiply and then you subtract afterwards.